Hello everyone. My name is Shatadal Das. Welcome to another educational video on the topic metal oxide barrister conduction. Metal oxide barrister is otherwise commonly known as zinc oxide block. You must have already watched my previous two videos on basics of surge protection and lightning protection zone and protection systems. Those videos were on system level operation of surge arrestor. Today we will understand how the metal oxide barrister responds to the applied voltage. In my career, sometimes I was getting questions from clients that, what is the current carrying capacity of your surge arrestor? When does the surge arrestor start conducting? The origin or the purpose of asking this question was interesting as it used to be an investigation of the surge arrestor failure. It is quite obvious that today we are not going to study the surge arrestor failure modes, rather we will just learn how the metal oxide barrister operates. I am sure many people related to surge arrestor industry or power sector might already aware of the construction of surge arrestor. But for others, please refer the indicated image. The major components being silicon rubber housing or enclosure, aluminium electrodes, MOV, aluminium spacer if required, fiber composite reinforcement, line terminal and mounting base. But today we will only discuss about the MOV discs. So let's first understand the structure of MOV discs. This is an illustration of MOV showing its zinc oxide grains, grain boundary with the depletion layer. This illustration is not the actual representation. Actually, the MOV grain structure looks something like this. This image has been magnified 2000 times to get a proper view of the grains. So now the billion dollar question is, when does the zinc oxide block start conducting? And the answer is, every time. When voltage is applied to a surge arrestor, it is ultimately gets applied on the MOV. Due to this applied voltage on MOV, the grain boundary experience charge accumulation and slowly the charge starts crossing the grain boundary. As the applied voltage further increases, more and more charge starts crossing the grain boundary and hence there is an increase in current flowing through the MOV. At this point, the current increases from the range of microamps to milliamps. A point comes when the applied voltage increases to an extent that the grain boundary breaks down and there is a rapid increase in current. At that point, the current flows from a few amperes to few hundred or few kiloamps. The interesting part of zinc oxide based MOV is that after the breakdown of the grain boundary, once the applied voltage is removed, the depletion layer gets recovered and the normal condition of the surge arrestor is restored. The operation of MOV and the behavior of grain boundary can be taken in a separate video. To understand the MOV conduction further, I have created a MOV conduction simulator in Excel. This demonstration is for single MOV with continuous operating voltage of 4 kV and rated voltage of 5 kV. The simulator has two modes of operations, one for TOV range, second for transient range. The TOV range simulator starts from 3 kV till 5.2 kV of applied voltage. The transient range simulator starts from 1 amps peak till 100 kilo amps peak. For the demonstration, we will vary it from 100 amps peak till 100 kilo amps peak. The residual voltage is also shown in the display. There are two controls, one for the TOV range and other for the transient range. The graph shown in the right hand side top as the voltage and current signal in the sinusoidal core form. Provision has been given to enable and disable the voltage signal, total current signal, capacitive current signal and resistive current signal. The graph shown in right hand side bottom has the voltage and current curve plotted in a logarithmic scale. This graph has been shown in three zones, TOV range, switching transient and lightning transient range. Now you can see as we increase the applied voltage, how the current waveform is changing from pure capacitive, which is represented as a sinusoidal in shape and nearly 90 degrees out of phase from the voltage waveform 
into a different shape which is a mix of capacitive and resistive current. Simultaneously, see how the cursor moves on the VI curve. It is also important to note that with a small change in the voltage, the current is rapidly changing. Watch this section of video once again for clarity. Now let's see the behavior of MOV in transient range. You can see as the current through the MOV is changing, the residual voltage also changes. You can also find how the MOV operation shifts from switching transient to lightning transient as the cursor moves on the VI curve. Here we have indicated the percentage change in current and voltage for the users. Watch this section of video once again for clarity. So in summary, we can say the MOV is always in conduction. With the change in applied voltage, the magnitude of current through MOV changes in an exponential scale. This means the MOV has high impedance at normal operating voltage and low impedance at over voltage or transient condition. Also it is important to remember that the MOV is like a switch, which means after any transient event, the MOV returns back to its original state of operations. So we have come to the end of this video. I hope this video was informative. Please like this video, give your valuable comments and subscribe to my YouTube channel.